There's no way you can cover this guy in like one video, like one video, like one video. Like one video. Virtual Riot, full name Christian Valentin Brune. Aww, Valentine. Is a producer from Germany, currently signed to Disciple Records. Inspired by artists such as Skrillex and the new emerging dubstep scene, VR started to produce his own music. Here's what his music used to sound like. Then, he had a string of releases in 2012 that saw a big success. But it wouldn't be till 2013 that VR would really cement his name into dubstep history with his EDM mashup Idols, featuring the vocals of Skrillex, Cone Sound, Knife Party, Avicii, Zed, and more. And then just a couple months later, on Energy Drink, a fun bubbly electro track with dubstep influences. Both of these amassing over 6 million views each. Virtual Riot has since had numerous releases under his belt. Like the track Idols refers to in the title, VR's influences range far and wide. In fact, his first track on SoundCloud is a self-described combination of rock, pop, metal and trance. Aww, Valentine. VR has made a point of being a very diverse producer, usually separating the different styles to different releases, like on Still Kids versus Throwback, and then German Engineering. But how can I do a how to on someone when you can't contain their one style of music? I guess you can't. The end. We'll be splitting this tutorial into four sections, or four horsemen of the adpocalypse, if you will. I wish I had a better pun, but I don't. Melodic dubstep, glitch hop, future garage, maybe an electro house. The glitch hop and electro house will actually be really similar. The tempo should be around 150. I think 140 used to be the popular number for dubstep, but we 150 now. A big part of melodic dubstep are the super source. They pretty much define the whole rhythm and harmony for the whole entire song. You can also add a filter on them, very much like in that Dead Mouse video, to create a plucky intro. Open up a serum and turn on the unison for the source. If you have the extra CPUs, then go for 16, but otherwise, 8 is probably fine too. If you want, you can add a second oscillator that is an octave higher and slightly more detuned. And in good VR tradition, we will be adding OTT. You always want to layer your chords with what I call a saw noise bass. This is just a sawtooth with maximum distortion and massive with the classic tube. However, slightly adding some white noise into the sound can create a raspier, more textured sound. And the randomness of the white noise also prevents it from feeling too static. And it layers really well with the super source. VR uses a ton of 8-bit sounds throughout all his music styles. Sticking to that theme, we can go and make a simple arpeggio to go along with the chords. I'll get into music theory soon, but we can keep this art relatively simple just by using the notes of the first chord of the scale. So if we're in F minor, then just use the notes from F minor, but you can add extra notes in between to spice it up a bit. But like I said, we'll get to that part. 
adding some delay makes it less dry and creates a nice ambience. And also, yeah, put some OTT on it. VR's drum kicks usually sound like this. And his snare often has a strong fundamental that cuts through the mix. He also likes to sidechain his hi-hats to the kick and snare, creating more impact for the kick and snare while also creating some dynamic rhythm for these higher percussion elements at the same time. Don't overdo this however, or else it just sounds really weirdly overly compressed. The kick and the chords tend to line up, like how the kick and 808s line up in trap. Often the chords will also stop when the snare comes in. This makes it a lot easier to mix because not everything is playing it all at once, but the rhythm of the chords starting and stopping is also a lot more interesting than just having sustained chords being held down the whole time. Oh yeah, and add an LFO tool to turn that into instant future bass. Let's add a lead to go on top of these chords. A big part of it comes from using the sync warp mode and vibrato to make it sound more alive. For vocal chops, there's two ways you could go about doing this. One is to just take a segment of the vocal and play it like an instrument. The other is to chop it up, either in a sampler or in the playlist. Either way, it's cool to put an auto-tune plugin on it. If you set it to the key of your track, then you won't need to worry about the samples being in key or not. Some auto-tune plugins even let you change the formats and how the vocal sounds. And um, yeah, let's add an OTT to that. Also saturating it to get that overblown speaker sound is something that VR likes to do. We'll also need to add those little bleeps and bloops. It's basically just a square wave, but um, I think it's forgetting something. Do you know what it's forgetting? Oh yeah. Now that we have a main structure to the drums and chords, we can fill up those empty spaces in between with... <laughs> Virtual Wright has a whole library full of bass sounds that he might just chuck in here, but us plebs has to resort to using VR presets. Am I, Am the, I first the first person, person to ever act like this? Right? But fear no longer, for I will demystify how Virtual Riot makes his presets, and you can start making your own presets and stop using the Virtual Riot ones. Please, for the love of God, stop. Basically, put OTT on everything. No. I know you think this is a joke, but this is serious. Something you should learn is the OTT sound. The way I describe it in my head is that it can make a muffled sound turn into a bright polished sound. And especially with bass sounds, it can really bring out certain frequencies. Virtual Riot, more like Virtual Riot OTT. Oh my god, Riot OTT? The question then is when do you know to add OTT or not? The answer is just experimenting enough times with OTT to be able to imagine what the effect would sound like on something without it. Just like you can imagine what reverb or delay, delay sounds, sounds like. like. Of course, you can go overboard with OTT and entirely squash the sound. Like everything, moderation is key. So starting out with an init patch in Serum. Oh, that's where the name init comes from. Find a cool wavetable and automate the volume of that along with the sub with the same LFO. We're going to be using this LFO for pretty much everything. I would automate the wavetable too. Though sometimes choosing a specific way will work better than others, maybe even backwards. We'll basically be adding more motion to the sound at this stage. For instance, putting an LFO on the FM from B can change the timbre a lot. Just make sure the volume for oscillator B is also off. Then we'll want to get the high pass 12 filter and put an LFO on that too. Now we'll start to get that vowelly motion to our sound. You can also add a small amount of bright white noise. Small, I said small amount. Just to add some high end in case you think it's missing some. I'd probably add OTT at this point if you hadn't already. VR usually will just boost the gain to bring back the volume. But did you know you can drag these little lines down here and it'll boost the different bands? I've had some good results with this, but your mileage may vary. Get a hyper dimension and turn the size down to zero. It will still work, you just won't get those small short delays after the sound. Put an LFO on the, the mix knob as well. 
and the mix of the distortion and the mix of the phaser, but turn these knobs down so that the phaser stays in the exact position you want it to and doesn't keep moving about. A pretty cool trick is to get an EQ and create two notches on them. Then with each note, the notches will move in the opposite direction, creating more of that vowel-y sound. And lastly, a bit of plate reverb. Reverb on the bass, say, what? Well, as long as you don't drown it in reverb, then it can be cool. It just makes the sound have a bit of room and space to it and doesn't sound so bone dry. And with the LFO, you can control it so it only adds to the sound and doesn't ring out afterwards. And that's how you make a virtual riot preset. Now, please stop using them. Stop. If you see if you see someone using a virtual riot preset or you hear it, you send them here and you tell them, stop it and watch this. Do your part in making SoundCloud a better place. Okay, that's it. That's that part. Let's talk a moment to talk about music theory. A lot of VR tracks are in A minor. It's an easy key to start off in due to there being no black keys. I can tell these progressions are all in A minor because while they don't always start or finish on the A minor chord, the one chord or the root chord of the scale, the A minor chord used in the progression sounds like where you could end the song. See, if we played till this part, it still feels like it would need to resolve the chords. We're still expecting something else to come. So that's how I can tell it's in the key of A minor. However, the chord progressions that VR typically writes don't usually have that overly sad minor key sound, but are actually quite uplifting and blissful. This could be due to making use of the C major chord as well, creating this weird state where it's hard to tell whether it's actually an A minor or C major. Remember, these keys have the same notes, and the only difference is being on where you start on the scale, which heavily affects the mood of the track. The type of chords you'll often write make use of the 7th or 9th, but he'll less likely use the same type of subtle dissonance I talked about in the San Holo tutorial. Chords in his progressions often go up by one note in the scale, And what's particularly interesting is the frequent use of him going from the G to A minor, which is something that happens a lot more than I expect. Those are just the chord progressions beginning where it goes from G to A minor. But here are some more that don't start with the G to A minor, but still have it. Fortunately, VR's typical Supersaur and vowel bass style translates over into Electra House and Glitch Hop, so we can reuse a lot of the sounds from before. The focus here relies mainly on arrangement and how you use those sounds. While Electra House will be at 128 to 130 and follow the standard four on the floor drum pattern, clap on the two and four. Glitch Hop tends to be slower, but will variate the drums a bit more. A big part of the glitch hop feel is adding that triplet groove. You can turn on the triplet grid to help with that. Here's some other virtual rat type basses you can make. Rezo bass. Crooker's bass. 
Skrill Wub Bass Vocodex Although you might lose some highs using Vocodex, so you can bring it back out again with compression or saturation. And ODT. Before the drop, to transition from the verses, have these short bursts of chords or bass with verby spaces in between that can sometimes be filled up with different sounds and effects. The future garage that VR makes tends to be around 140 BPM, although sometimes at 115, so this isn't such a solid rule like with Electro House. The main two elements of this style are the Burial-esque drums, and low droney Reese bass. The bass is pretty simple, just get a detuned sore bass, but low pass it, I tend to add a bit of drive as well, and turn on the glide as well just to get that cool slide between the notes. For the drums, it usually helps if you have a bunch of metally samples you recorded out of your kitchen or garage, hence the name, Future Garage. You can be quite creative with these drum patterns. You could go for a slow halftime beat, or something a bit more up-tempo, but with the snare offset. It's also nice to have an extra percussion sample that's like the main snare, but a bit more subdued. Also rim snares, not just any old regular snare, but an actual rim snare. Yeah, that, that's it. Swing will be important for these drums and hi-hats. You can just boost the swing or use the groove pull, but unlike the triplet groove, what this is doing is shifting the second and fourth 16th notes to the right, making them a bit delayed and adding instant groove. Once you have those two elements, that's the main gist of the style. The rest will be filling up the mix with lush, spacious sounds, such as the sign pluck, Ads, like the Tokyo Soundscape ones, or some more vocal chops, but a lot more reverb being delayed. <laughs> VR likes to reuse vocals. That is very cute. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, and I use the I use the acapella again. That 
Never Let Me Go vocal can be found in the Zero G Vocal Foundry pack, along with the leaving vocals and many acapellas that have been used for vocal chops. And now, the moment you've been waiting for. Oh God, there's more. Why do I keep making it so hard for myself? Buy my shirts, I'm selling shirts now. Just like with melodic dubstep, we can do this at 150. But did you ever think, ah, these drums are too complicated. Well, fear no more. We're just gonna put down a kick and a clap. There, there. For rhythm type basses, we can use a lot of what we learned earlier. However, there are different characteristics for rhythm basses. For instance, the basses will be held down for a prolonged amount of time using the volume motion, womp, womp, womp. But although the motion stays the same, the timbre of the sound goes back and forth like a seesaw going wing, 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 wing. So if the volume curve is set to a quarter note, get another LFO and set it to a half note and make that an upwards ramp and put that on the wavetable position. So the first time you hear the bass, the wavetable is in this position, and then the second time you hear it, it's at another position. And then this loops, creating that seesaw effect I was talking about. The type of bass sounds you hear in rhythm are often quite chorus and metallic-y, so you can turn on the unison detune. I never really did this for the other bass sounds earlier, but for rhythm, it makes a lot more sense. The metallic sound mostly comes from a flanger. Set the filter to flig minus sign, and turn the cutoff to around 88.5 Hz. That's a good starting place. You can automate the cutoff a bit, but the motion will mostly come this time from automating the resonance of the flanger. Also putting on the key tracking can sometimes be cool because then the filter will move around and change with the notes. The lower you go with the flanger, the more little echoes you hear. This might not be what you want at the moment, but delays can be a really cool part of the rhythm bass sound. Setting short delays of a 16th notes or 70 to 50 milliseconds adds a nice ambience to the sound. Because we use the filter for the flanger, we don't have that high pass 12 filter from before giving us that nice vowel motion to the sound. Hmm. But we can use a second filter in the FX chain it's exactly the same as this one, with the same filter selection and everything, just you can't actually see it. But it's there, it's, it works exactly the same way. So this way we can still have that nice womp motion in the sound. Also the HN12 filter is pretty cool. It's like the high pass filter, but instead of having an extra peak, it has a notch instead. Although adding all these effects in Serum is a good starting point, it doesn't have to end there. Just rename an effects rack to FAT, fat rack, rack and bam, it will magically convert into VR's fat rack filled with every saturation plugin you can imagine, each adding a little bit of extra drive to the sound. Maybe on their own, it wouldn't make a huge difference, but they all add up. I'll include the link to where you can find a couple of these fat racks in the description, so go check those out. <laughs> Remember, make sure to use capital letters or else it just won't sound the same. Because you'll be holding down one note for the duration of the track, you know, it, it's rhythm, you'll want to choose a key that works the best with sub. The C note is in the awkward position of feeling either too high or too low, so that's why a lot of monotone bass heavy tracks are in the keys from E to G. They don't have to be, but it helps for this type of music. What else am I forgetting? Oh yeah, add haze on the offbeat and other funny vocals. Um, to my ears, that doesn't sound too bad. I ain't done yet. I'm sorry, mate. Hit him with the... Ah, that was rubbish. You're going to hell. Here's a touching story. Once upon a time, you died, and I lived happily ever after. The end. Yeah. The end. I hope you enjoyed this ultra-sized tutorial. I want to thank Crow, who I worked with to make our Virtual Riot track. It seemed incredibly fitting, since he himself has made lots of Virtual Riot remakes and tutorials that you can check out yourself on his YouTube channel. Did you know, if you support just one dollar on Patreon, you get my thanks. That's right. I also do lessons, which help keep the lights on, so let me know if that interests you. And now, without further ado, 
the track. What is going on? My name is Virtual Riot. And the track begins with this very epic intro. With lots of lots of saw waves. this little break. Bye.